This is the story of our Pathfinders. All of the following details are fiction, but very real experiences. Today we begin with our first adventure. Goblin Kings, Cults, and Worrisome Waters, Part 1. In lands untold, where the moons rise and the mountains fall, five Pathfinders receive invitations to the Baron's castle, which is a surprise, as they have never met him in person. With the promise of great rewards and riches, they take their paths to a city named Featherdale. It's a thriving town due to the Baron's success. The five meet at the castle for the first time, and are led to the Baron's Hall to be entertained. At the gathering's climax, the music wanes, and the Baron finally appears. With a booming voice, he says, Welcome! I am so glad that you have all accepted my invitation. These must mean good omens for our gathering. They are introduced to a visitor from a small town named Thistle. There were whispers as to why the Baron was giving so much attention to such a small region in his domain, but many chalked it up to him just being a nice guy. The Baron stretches out his hand and says, His name is Jern. His town has fallen to a scourge and requests the help of you five. Please listen to this man and his plight. The Baron beckons him forward. Jern meekly takes his place in front, and begins his sad tale. Mm, yes, three weeks back, everyone started getting sick. Most people are stuck in their beds. They can't work, they can't move, and some goblin came out of the woods, demanding that we pay him. If we don't, he says the sickness will only get worse. I fear for my town, my sister. Jern's face tenses up, and he shuts his eyes as if he's fighting off a terrifying thought that appeared in his mind. The Baron interrupts with a determined, lively voice. As Baron, I have already prepared a medicine for his town to receive treatment. Upon delivery of this medicine, and the swift elimination of this threat, I promise you all a nice sum of gold. Please, take your time to discuss this. I will be with you all shortly. The five guests finish their meals and are brought to one of the Baron's many libraries. The group sticks out quite a bit. A small gnome sits on a chair staring wide-eyed at the uh -huh. library itself. A tall man dressed in robes stands mm. deep in thought across the room holding a tight grip on his staff. Another human, with a burly stature and a braided beard, stands at attention, inspecting everyone in the room with a large smile on his face. A cleric distances himself from the rest, clearly showing distaste for being in the same presence as this motley crew. Finally, a half-orc stands tall above the rest, staring down at the strange gathering that she's found herself in. As the five get a good look at each other, the Baron returns and begins with an inebriated air. Ah, so fabulous to see you've gotten acquainted with each other. Now please, listen close, for there are other matters I would like you to attend to during your time in Thistle. The Baron eyes the room suspiciously as if the walls had ears. They all lean in close to hear what he has to say. As we have discussed prior, Jern's town is of utmost importance. However, there is a small task I would like you to look into. He peers around at everyone, a very serious look stuck on his rosy face. Certain people have visited me in my court. They are very organized and powerful. They want me to join their ranks, but I have my doubts. They are called the Circle. The Baron looks over his shoulder dramatically, 
breathing heavily, his eyes growing wide as if his mother heard him swear. When he was sure that it was just his imagination, he turns back to the group. These people concern me. I'd like you all to learn more. There are rumors of an underground cult in Thistle. There was a library there, but it has been burned down. I want you to see what you can salvage. Then maybe, just maybe, I'll have an edge. He turns back once again to look over his shoulder. The group looks at each other, quizzically. The cleric steps forward and with a nasally hmm. voice, says, Sacred cults? Goblins? Disease? How much are you paying us for our efforts? I'll have you know, my services do not come cheap. As a devout follower of Saren Ray, I... Azele cannot waste my precious time with trivial earthly matters. Unless there is a fair price. Azele looks at the Baron expectantly. However, the gnome interrupts. Her voice shrill, as gnomes' voices should be. Well, I want to know what the circle's really all about. Are they really as scary as they say? And what's up with the goblin? I've never seen a goblin cast a spell before. And a fire? What's up with that? Sounds like there's a mystery afoot. The gnome continues to grumble to herself. The human steps forward, squares himself in the middle of the group, and puffs out his chest. He puts on a big smile and says, Hello there. My name is Thurgus. Thurgus Flintbreaker. My family has been crafting the finest flint weapons in Druma for the past thousand years. Since we're all doing introductions, I felt it was best to insert myself. In any case, you can always count on a dwarf to get the job done. Everyone stares at him strangely. Because he is clearly not a dwarf. Also, this is my big lady friend, Clothern. She came out of our mountain with me. Isn't she just the finest thing crafted on this side of the mountain? Thurgis smiles up at Clothern, whose gaze remains unchanged. Everyone, except the Baron, began to notice the elephant in the room and face the creature. Feeling the tense energy, Clothern stands straight and grumbles. <clears throat> Clothern fight! Clothern win! Satisfied with herself, she takes her previous stance and stares back at the group. The gnome, briefly distracted by everyone's silence, looks at the man in long robes and says, Hey, Zinnos! Usually when people meet up, they introduce themselves. Come on, get over here and use some of the words I taught you. The man turns to the gnome and says, As I recall... You have forgotten to tell our host your name, Bell. Bell gasps and blushes from embarrassment. Zenos turns to the group and says in a calm voice, I don't remember much of my past, but my name did stick in my memory. I was born with magic and am what most would call a sorcerer. I am interested in anything that may lead to uncovering my past. The circle seems like it would know quite a many of things. With the group fully introduced to each other, the Baron claps his hands. We are in agreement. You will all complete these tasks for me and be paid handsomely in return. Please, I will board you for the night, and you will be on your way at first light. Follow my maids to your chambers. The Baron shambles out of the room, drunk and nervous, which is not a good combination, if you ask me. His maids flow in, beckoning everyone to their quarters. Clothern eyes everything suspiciously, not even trusting the Baron's words. She decides to sleep with one eye open tonight, a skill she has acquired in the mountains. Thurgis makes himself comfortable on his bed, having always wondered what a bed would feel like. The cleric counts all his gold and trinkets, and follows his nightly skincare regimen before sleep. 
The wizard is again lost in thought, and the gnome passes out on her bed reading her book. The night passes, morning dawns, and the adventurers begin their journey. If you enjoyed this adventure, share it with your friends. Tweet it out with the link in the description. We'd be happy to share our stories with other adventurers. Also, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and join our Discord. We'd love to talk to you. Thanks for watching, and be on the lookout for part two next week. Bye!